Okay, here's a video on how to make jigs for this conduit deck. What I'm going to do is I'm going to provide you with all the measurements you're going to need to make a jig and to get this job done. This particular deck I made with one inch electrical conduit. And when you get done with my jigs, you're going to be able to make this and there's some uh, neat benefits to having your uh, your railings horizontal instead of vertical. It's a self-cleaning deck. You know, the balusters don't collect any leaves. And I will say uh, before I end this video is when you uh, finish your boards towards the end of the house, because you're going to start at the other end, make sure you cut the ends of these boards, at least two of them, before you screw them down because when you go to cut off the rest of your boards you're just not going to have room with your circular saw so at least two maybe three boards on that and let's continue to the jig making okay this is the jig portion of the video on how to make conduit railings before we can even think about making this we got to make sure we've got the right tools so you're going to need a drill press don't even consider trying to do this freehand. It just won't work. It won't line up. And this particular drill press, it's a full-size drill press, 15 inch, made by Rigid. But it doesn't matter. As long as you have a full-size drill press, and the key here is, is that it is uh, a drill press that has a table that you can angle because you're going to need that when you drill those holes for those railings on the stairs that are angled. Next thing you're going to need is some bits. This 15 16 spade bit on the bottom is going to do the lion's share of the work. You're going to use that to make your jig and all of the holes in all of the 4x4s. The only thing you're going to use this top one for is to finish the angled holes for the railings that are on your stairs. You just can't use a spade bit on angled holes. And remember, I'm going to give you links to all of these tools and all of these um, apps or anything I talk about in the information section of my video. So just look there and I'll have internet links for you. Uh, the other thing that you're really going to need that makes this a lot easier is this Wixi digital angle gauge. You'll use it for all sorts of projects if you're a woodworker or a carpenter. And I like it because it's got earth magnets on the bottom. It zeroes out nicely. And um, you're going to use that when you set up a, a mock-up of your rails on the stairs. You're going to drop this on uh, the board for the mock-up. And it, once you determine the angle, then you're going to come into your shop. And you're going to set that on your table for your drill press. Set it to the exact angle. Tighten it down. And you are going to be good to go. Without that you'll probably go through 100 4x4s figuring the right angle. Now, if you wanted to cheap out, you could get an app for your iPhone or your Android, and I'll put links for those. But, you know, are these going to be as accurate as that Wixie? No way. Just no way. I, I don't like the way they zero out, but I am going to include them just in case you're on a tight budget. And here we go. Let's start with the jigs. This is your main jig you're going to make so you can drill holes in all your 4x4s and it's got all the math for you. Uh, this is laid out so when you're done and your deck railings are finished, you're going to end up with three and a half inch spacing. Now in New York, uh, where I'm from, you cannot uh, have a deck that has space is larger than four inches. So this is going to keep you a half an inch within code. And, you know, it's a good idea to check code in your area, but chances are you're going to be safe here. So uh, this line over here, all this does is tell you, hey, this is going to be the top of the deck. You know, this, this would be the uh, bottom of the uh, jig here, and that would be the bottom of the 4x4. Four four. And if you're using uh, two by eight, floor joists that are kiln dry, they're going to be seven and a quarter and I'm using bull nose decking so you add another inch and, and that line represents the top of the deck. So um, this other line over here is just 
you know, represents the finished deck at 46 and a quarter. But I highly recommend do not cut all your four by fours to size. Get them all up, get them installed, and then use a, a tight chalk line uh, and, and go ahead and make your, uh, make your marks with a string or a chalk line and then cut them to size uh, when you're ready to put those railings on the top. In my case, all I did was lay a 2x4 uh, on the, uh, the side of the 4x4s vertically and then horizontally I've got a 2x6 to cap it and you can look at the pictures for that so the other thing you're going to do too is uh, you're going to have a, a couple of uh, three inch screws drill some pilot holes first so they go on and out easy and it really sucks the wood in tight uh, you know don't uh, don't forget that but uh, what these screws are going to do for you is, is once you get this jig made uh, you're gonna you're gonna put that four by four in there, the four footers, and then you're gonna sock your screws down nice and tight, and then flip it over and start drilling your holes with the spade bit on your uh, on your drill press. And you know that's it's important that you also make the jig in the drill press as well. You know, lay your lines out. You know, you're gonna be taking a tape measure going from this foot after you build it and you're first at 12 and 3 8 and so forth and then make sure they're dead nut center in that 2 by 4 and um, you know you may even want to prick punch them so uh, it's a little more accurate and then take your spade bit and drill all your holes uh, once that's made you're going to be able to go ahead and uh, use that jig for all of your 4 by 4s here's a picture of that jig when it's done and uh, this is the, the working side of it that's going to be facing up on the drill press, you know, and then you're going to have your 4x4 four four screwed in. And uh, by having the screws, it just won't move at all on you. It's going to be super accurate. Now, this part of the, the video here is important because I found out the hard way uh, that if you try to assemble this wrong, uh, these walls in the wrong order, you're going to be in a world of hurt. You know, all your 4 by 4s that's what these are, uh, are going to be bolted in two bolts on each 4 by 4 through these uh, box outs here. You're going to build these box outs. Now, my deck is 16 by 24. You can obviously change it to any size you want. And I've got my stairs over here. But it's important to remember that these box outs, you know, don't put your short ends of the box outs yet. You're going to you're gonna need these to be rectangular, and there's a good reason. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to build this wall number one, and here's the order over here. I've got all sorts of notes for you, but uh, assembly order is one through eight. So you build the whole wall number one, and there's a methodology to that too. You know, you've... Uh, all you got to do is take your four by fours after they're all drilled out and keep in mind, you know, some, some are going to be drilled out a little different like this corner one. Well, you're going to have holes that are adjacent to each other, not on opposite ends like these. So, you know, keep that in mind. And anyways, what you're going to do is take this first four by four, lay it out on your uh, joists here, and then take a couple screws and uh, catch the corners of that 4x4 four four as it's lying down and uh, knock some screws into it into the joist so it will not move. You're going to need it to stay stable because you're going to be tapping in all sorts of pipes into these holes and they're going to be snug. Uh, you're going to use a little bit of lubricant. Uh, I use a woodworking lubricant called Slip It and you could use a uh, you know, vegetable shortening if you were in a pinch, but I'll give you the link for that slip it too. And what you're also going to do is, you know, take a two by two, about a foot long, a foot and a half long, and then take your spade bit and cut a hole uh, at the end of that two by two. And what that's going to do for you is, is you're going to, you're going to cut all your pipes to the length you need. Um, you know, just measure the span between the four by four and then add three inches to determine the pipe length to be cut. You're going to take some zinc paint and just barely touch the ends of the pipes, let them dry. You know, God forbid you have these galvanized pipes rust 
after you cut them. So you're going to spend a little money on some zinc paint. But anyways, you're going to you're going to lay this one down, screw it in, tap them in one by one, and that stick's going to help you a lot because you're going to take all of these pipes and you're going to make small marks with a permanent marker an inch and a half out on the ends. Just a little dash. You don't want to mess them up and put huge circles on them or anything. And then now you can watch that mark as you're tapping. You're going to use uh, one of those cheap mallets from like Harbor Freight that are fluorescent orange that have the dead weight BBs in them. Those work great for tapping these in. Uh, and now you're going to be able to watch that mark as you're tapping it, holding that pipe with that little jig you made. And if you didn't have that, you'd probably be hitting your hand every other hit. So uh, make that jig as well. You get all of your uh, pipes tapped in to the mark. And now you're going to uh, put a little uh, lubricant on the ends. Okay. Uh, I, I don't worry the, about the lubricants on that first one, but you can put it on all of them. They'll just go in easier. And, uh, and then put a little lubricant on the ends here and carefully angle that four by four from the first pipe and then nestle that second one in and to give it a couple taps. And you'll get the idea. You're just, you're knocking in that four by four at an angle and then start squaring it up and tapping it until all of your lines are right at the edge of the four by four. Now, once that one's done, you're going to take a couple more screws and hold that down. Because if we don't screw these four by fours down, they're going to start moving on us and they're going to possibly go in too far. We don't want them going any farther. And then you do the same thing. And now you build a whole wall. Okay. Once you get that whole wall built, number one, then you're going to do it yourself or have a friend to help you pick it up and slide it into this box out. Okay. Once you get it where you want it, uh, you know, take a piece of bullnose decking. You're going to want, this whole deck is going to have the width of one bullnose decking board all the way around the perimeter. So it looks real nice and you're not having to cut into them at all with a scroll saw. So uh, once you get them where they're supposed to be, you know, you're going to uh, keep in mind that when you go to drop these in the holes, you're going to have floors built for these box outs. That's what it says up here. And all that is, is just scrap lumber that'll cover that whole opening, screw them from the bottom side of the deck. And now these four by fours, when you drop them in the whole wall, obviously, if you didn't have floors built on the bottom of the box outs, they just drop right through. So, and that's going to keep them perfectly in the position they need to be until you get them spaced out and drilled in. And then that wall is built. Then you do the same thing with wall number three. You build a whole wall. Do the same thing, you know. Obviously, you're going to have to pull all your temp screws when you're going to pick it up and drop it into place. And then do the same thing with wall three. Wall four is going to be a little tougher. You're going to have to start from this corner and uh, start uh, one section at a time and then a post, another section and a post. But you'll get it done. And then your shorty walls and then you finally your stairs. And see, if you don't do it this way and you, you make the mistake that I did, I, I put in the first post and I drilled the holes, had it all bolted into this box out and all proud of myself. You got to remember, these holes and these pipes fit tight. So when I went to put in that second post, I'm like, uh-oh, how am I going to do this? I can't put the pipes in at an angle like some of the guys on YouTube do. They drill holes that are so big that these pipes are flopping around and they add no structural integrity to your deck. So, no, that wasn't going to work. I had to pull that post out and build a whole wall at a time and just follow the order. Now, if for some reason you wanted your stairs over here, well, you're going to have to figure out a different methodology. Figure it out and do it the same way. You know, you may have to, uh, you may have to build this wall whole and then this section at a time all the way to the corner and same thing uh, with the, this wall and this one, a section at a time, if your stairs were here. Uh, but, you know, that, that's up to you. Now, if you're building a deck that's elevated and there are no stairs, well, you may want to consider not building conduit rails unless you like being on a ladder a lot because you're. it's going to be much more difficult. Uh, you know, how, how are you going to have 
uh, how are you going to finish? These stairs actually save you. So uh, even if you did have ladders, you, you probably wouldn't be able to get it done because, you know, you'd have to do a section at a time all the way around. And once you get close to your house, it's going to be pretty difficult. You know, remember, we're, we're using these uh, horizontal box outs to our advantage. Now, while we're talking about box outs, once your railings are all done and you cut the tops and whatever, you're going to have to have uh, small pieces of two by fours on each side here, you know, nail them in. So now when your, your decking uh, has something to nail to on this side, if you don't, you know, your boards are going to start cracking on you. So you're going to need a, a four-sided box out once you're done. But that's the hardest part, you know. Uh, that's the hardest part. Uh, when, you, when you're drilling your holes in your 4x4s, four uh, you're going to drill them two inches deep so that they meet, you know, when you have a post like this. And same thing, they'll meet when you, uh, when you have a, a corner as well. And they're only going in an inch and a half, so they never should actually touch each other when you're pounding them in. But that was, uh, that was the hardest part for me is figuring out how I would puzzle this thing together. And, uh, and like I say, don't forget, make mock-ups so you can figure those angles out. And uh, another thing that helped me immensely, too, is when you're using your drill press, and you're, you're, uh, you've got four by fours on there, you maybe want to set up some temporary tables on both sides. So that way, when you're at the end of a four by four, it doesn't want to fall off. Uh, you don't, it would prevent you from having to clamp down each four by four if it was ready to fall off. So anyways, that's it. You know, that's, that's how you build conduit railings. Uh, you know, that just make sure you've got the right tools and you can get it done. Is it easy? No. If you've never built a deck before, you may want to find a, a carpenter friend to help you. Or you could pay for it all and just give this to your carpenter and tell him how to do it and he can use these plans. But uh, those apps I talked about, you know, they're for Androids or iPhones. And just go on your smartphone and look for iHandy Level. They've got it for the, you know, in the uh, Google App Store too. And that'll do it for this video. That's, uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe to my Pompano Brownie channel and check out my other videos. And that'll do it for this video.